Hi and welcome to my playhouse and to the last video of 2018. So as the last thing this year we're gonna be uh, going in a different direction next year uh, or at least we're gonna we're gonna try it out. Um, I'm gonna be installing Proxmox today. You might have read the description of the video down there somewhere and um, yeah there is a little bit of a reasoning to that. I have been using VMware ESXi on all of my servers for as long... Well, I've never used any other hypervisor. Have I? Nah, I think I've always used ESXi. Um, I did use the workstation edition and there was also a server edition at some point way back where you install VMware on top of a Windows server. But, never mind. ESXi has been losing grounds uh, in my mind and what I think about it it's like every time there's a new edition that comes out they take something out of it and they put it into their very expensive packaging for the high-level enterprise uh, customers um, ESXi is a great product it's very stable it's very versatile it can do everything uh, but it's bloody expensive and they are keep making it more and more expensive by taking essential things out of it and putting it in different packages that you then also need to buy. Uh, it's not a new strategy, multiple companies do this and it's bloody irritating because uh, you think you have some product you can use for everything and suddenly well yeah we uh, we upgraded that and now you need the, the the diagnostics package over here. Ah, oh, and the diagnostics package. Oh yeah, it's a little bit extra, but you buy it three years and you'll know. Mm. And it's just irritating. Uh, so Proxmox is kind of the new player. It's one of the new players and I know a lot of you will now be typing, why didn't you try this? Why didn't you go? Why don't you? Why? Well, I have heard good thing about Proxmox and I'm gonna be trying that one. There is also, yeah, on raid. Uh, Hyper-V but Hyper-V has kind of the same problem but more or less everybody and his cousin's dog is making a hypervisor these days so uh, yeah I just have some friends that are using Proxmox and heard good things plus Anki Joe at Anki Joe's Playhouse has also been messing around with, with Proxmox and um, yeah it looks promising that's not gonna work no, 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 that's bad joke. Proximately good. Nah. Okay, so today we're gonna be installing Proxmox on my new server, the Lenovo X3650 Model 5. It has a couple of boot drives over here, two 300 gigabytes, uh, 12 gigabit SAS drives, spinning disks, no, but we're gonna be installing Proxmox on that, and then we're gonna we're gonna mess with that in 2019 that's uh, that's the plan we're gonna try and see if we can hmm pass through some graphics card to it uh, to the virtual machines at some point there is also a rate controller down there which is right now connected to this Hewlett Packard storage box I want to pass that through to another virtual machine that would be nice to try that but we need to install the bloody thing first so um, we're gonna go to the computer -ish in the living room where it's nice and hot so uh, Magic. Okay, so here we are at the computer and I have um, remembered that I have to speak up loud because I have a tendency to be mumbling when I'm sitting at the computer. So please remind me when I start mumbling because that's bloody irritating when I have to edit this video. But I have connected to my uh, Lenovo server out in the data center here, the Lenovo X3650 Model 5. And I have to log in there. I never changed the password, so it's still the user ID. User ID with capital letter, and the password is password, but with a zero instead of the O, uh, capital letter. And we should be able to log in and see our server. While it does that, um, this is the homepage for Proxmox. Proxmox is kind of free, but if you're going to be using it for anything seriously, um, there is kind of a subscription thing for some service stuff that will probably uh, 
be a good idea to uh, to get. I uh, don't believe it's very expensive. I actually haven't checked in on that. I really should have. But um, on the homepage here, we can see that Proxbox VE 5.3 has been released. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, and that's their hypervisor. They do also have a Proxbox mail gateway. We are not going to be installing that, but it seems that it's kind of those two products that they are really trying to sell us. So, yeah, we are going to get that, uh, that virtualizing thingy. Uh, and they have a nice web page here. We can read stuff. We are into that kind of stuff. Oh, software training. They offer that. Enterprise support. Um, maybe that's where we should look for that. There are some stuff you can do if you get the enterprise support. It's you can do everything, but they make something easier for you when you get that. So let's go directly to download, and there is a lot of different stuff here. There is the Proxmox uh, VE, there's the mail gateway, mail gate subscription, VE administration guide. So it's not as if there is a lot of different stuff here. You can download the virtualization software directly or we can go to BitTorrent uh, so they kind of just have these three boxes of software that we can pick up which two of them are alike it's the same thing just two different ways to do that and then there's manuals so I'm gonna download that one and if you look very closely down here I have already got that because I wanted to make sure that it downloaded I didn't want to waste your time as well so we have downloaded that but it's very simple you just press the button and it downloads it couldn't be simpler than that I, I really like this uh, no uh, signing up for anything or doing anything weird so that was kind of cool so uh, download it so we can go back to our server here which has in the meanwhile <laughs> locked in nice so we need to um, enterprise level servers has remote control so i can sit here in my living room uh, maybe watch the fire in the background and i can manage my server even install the operating system or set up raid controllers and drives and stuff like that let's try the java client see how far we get single user we have to mount this iso file to the server uh, which sometimes is a bit tricky. Yeah, we get some security issues. Yeah, there is pain in the bottom. Let's see. Continue. Go, go, gadget. I think we are in luck. Yes, KDM switch. Continue. And we get our screen on our server. And in the last video I was doing on this, I was messing with hard drives. And we can see that uh, this is the Hewlett Packard storage controller that I installed in there. And it has these six hard drives. But that's not what we are doing here. We're gonna shut that down and we're leaving it. But we need to mount our ISO file on our server out there. We do that up here under virtual media. And I actually, when I was using that Hewlett Packard, smart storage thingy administrator manager something and um, i also mounted an iso file that's probably why it's um yeah it, it just crashed because it doesn't have the files that that it needs so we're gonna mount another iso file to it and it can learn to be happy about that so select iso file here um, or we're gonna mount it to the server out there so add image and we're gonna go to the download directory and we have marks 5.3 dash 1 pick that one uh, we can map it and we can mount it so now that is mounted to the server out there so if we boot it it should see that and I have to um, Tell it to look for it, but let's just uh, tools and power and restart server immediately. Yes. Okay. 
Okay, that took forever and ever. That big uh, disc array of drives out there with no boot things on them. Uh, it did not like that, so uh, let's um, do some legacy booting here. And uh, it should be on the DVD drive. And uh, let's see if we get some Proxbox. We are not going to be doing much more in this video than just installing it uh, the bare minimum of it. Um, gonna save updating it and doing a lot of hopefully awesome stuff with it to an upcoming video where we can go further into depth. But here we can see the virtual drive that we're gonna be installing it on. It found one virtual drive on the host. Uh, that should be the two 300. Oh, look at that. That's so nice. Splash screen. So we are gonna be picking the first one. Installing Proxmox VE. So that's what the VE is there for. Virtual environment. Okay, installing, loading Proxmox installer. Okay, it's got, it's making a RAM drive. Uh, there is not that much RAM in that server. We need to upgrade that. Um, yeah, we, we definitely need to do that. There is 16 gigabytes of RAM in it. We could do with some more. Okay, loading stuff. I am very excited to see if, um, well, if, if it has all the drivers for a server like this, or if we run into any kind of trouble. I did try and install this on a Lenovo X3650 Model 3, and there were no problems whatsoever. Or was it a Model 2? I think it was the Model 2. Sorry. Oh, oh we get a mouse. Woo. Okay, we have a license agreement. Uh, Proxmox Server Solution GmbH. That's usually for Germany. That's very interesting if this is a German product, which is not bad. Um, but we agree. Otherwise, this video is going to be really fast to edit if we just didn't do that. Then we have some different, it tells us up here what it's doing, some of the awesome things that it thinks it's, it's, um, it's capable of. And then we have an option for what to install it on. And I have that one option. I have only put in those two hard drives. It's two hard drives in a RAID 1. Um, awesome 300 gigabyte SAS drives. 12, 12 gigabits. So, options. Okay, we can do different stuff with that. We got with the recommended. Yeah, that's fine. And next, country. I am gonna assume that it's okay with Denmark. I don't know if that keyboard is gonna bite me in my. Uh, let's let's try it. Otherwise, I get that much smarter if uh, if that's gonna be a problem. Password. Okay, I need to put in a password and confirm that and give it my email address. Um, I do not believe that they spam you with anything. I did also do this when I installed it on the Model 2 and I have got nothing. So I'm going to put those in. We ran into a bit of a problem here. The .a or yeah doesn't work so had to do it out here okay moving on uh, we have a lot of network interfaces in this server uh, and it shows us one of them here and it has more or less just picked the first one so we need to pick the right network interface for it to use uh, it has four so okay it doesn't have that many uh, we are gonna be picking number one because I believe that's the one that I actually put a connection in. So, picking that one. 
then we have to give it a fully qualified domain name. Yeah, let's try that. IP address. Let's give it something good. Okay, I came up with some numbers. Let's see if this works. DNS server, that's an external DNS server. I'm not sure. If, I'm sure I can fix that afterwards. Nah, let's let's local. Let's see what happens. Okay, it uh, got that. So now it's installing and it's breaking. What can it do? Um, the ISO file was about 650 megabytes, so it's not as if it's about twice as big as the VMware ESX I file. So it is bigger. I don't know how big the installation is, but it's still way smaller than some of the other virtualization platforms. So while it's installing in the background, I kind of went to Proxmox page to, to figure out if this is a German company. And it is a German company, or at least the, the, the guys that started the company looks very German. It's in Austria. Okay, my mistake. It's just this GmbH is usually German. Um, it's, it's the way that they write their companies like uh, limited or it's a European country. Are we done? We're not done yet. It's still working. 99% make system bootable. Yes, it's installing the bootloader. Uh, yes, it is. So uh, when it has installed, we need to reboot the system. And with that, the Hewlett Packard storage box that might it took over five minutes to boot that server. So installation successful. Blah 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 blah. Reboot. Yes, rebooting. And we need to go up here and remove the media. It did that all by itself. Awesome. Incredible. Hmm. Okay, rebooting. Um, be back when it's done. Okay, it boots. Uh, that storage thing that I have out there takes takes seven minutes just to search for bootable devices. Holy. Okay, so now it says that we can log in through the web interface to it. So we will get ourselves a new Chrome here and we will borrow that address. There we are. Okay, advanced, continue. And yes, we get a login prompt. I need to give it a username. I think that's root. <laughs> yeah, and this is, um, we get this thinky here that we don't have a valid subscription. And that's the enterprise level stuff. That's how Proxmox makes their money uh, by selling you this subscription. Uh, yeah, I think I better go check what that costs just to have that in this video. Okay, found it here. So this is Proxmox subscription plan and they uh, tell us here what we need. Uh, the prices are actually not as cheap as I thought they were. And they, they kind of make it like uh, you pay a price per server and sockets. And I don't even know, uh, probably the first socket is included in, in one. So if you have a server with two sockets, that becomes expensive as well. But I have been looking at this and for from a enterprise level perspective, uh, you don't get much by taking the, the top level enterprise, prim they call it premium over here, solution, which costs 786 euros per year per CPU socket. Holy. So that means that if you have a server with two CPUs, that's 1600 euros. And if you want to translate that to dollars, just add 10%. Um, yeah, 
But what do you get for that money? You get access to the enterprise repository. That is actually updates. Um, you can update this without this, but you get access to all the approved updates, all the updates that they know will work and give you trouble. So there is that. Then there is the complete feature set, which is not described right here. I'm not entirely sure what that is, but I am guessing that I'm missing something until I get that. And then there is the community support. And this is the very cheapest one. This is the community starting out price. So that is 74.9 euros a year um, per socket. I don't like that per socket thing, since that's just a money machine. But if you go up from that, uh, what do you get if you pay three to four times as much? Well, you get the same access to the enterprise repository, complete feature set, support, support via customer portal. So you get something that is not the community support. And then you get three support tickets and response time one business day so but that response time one business day is the same thing on all of them so if you want this in a really enterprise environment i think the basic is where the the most value is if you need more than three support tickets a year then you might need a new hypervisor because um i don't know about you but I don't make support tickets to, to Microsoft or I don't make support tickets to VMware. Um, well, my company has done that, but we don't make three a year. Three is not enough? Well, it's the wrong product. And then you get, if you go further up, you get this remote support via SSH. I believe that means that they can uh, remotely help uh, to do something. And the very expensive one up here, the only other thing you get is unlimited support tickets. And yeah, you are already at 10 support tickets. That means that you have almost one problem every month that you cannot solve yourself. Nah, 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 no way. We are gonna definitely start without this. Uh, they do tell us up here that that this is a free product, that we can do some stuff, free software, license, blah, 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 blah. So, and, and all of these subscriptions plans are extra. But this is how Proxmox makes their money. And if you are a business, you should probably get one of these. I would, uh, I would take the two smallest ones uh, if it was my business. Wouldn't go up into the, to the bigger ones. It doesn't seem like they add any value. It seems like uh, that's just a money machine. So, but compared to VMware, this is very cheap, I must say. Back to Proxmox, and that's what this thing is about. Um, that we get that. Uh, it will complain when we go in here, and it will complain if we try to update. Uh, but I do know there is a way to remove that thingy, so we don't have to see it. So we're going to be doing that in not too long. Remove that. So this is the interface and it has a really nice new number up here. That's awesome. A funny thing, the, the thing that I downloaded was 5.3-1 and here it says 5. That's a bit weird. We can do different stuff, different places. There is the data center up here. There is the hypervisor, the, the machine. If we have more hypervisors, they will turn up beneath it. Uh, as I actually have one more that could go beneath that one, but as I'm not really very knowledgeable about this, I would have to uh, to ask someone who's way smarter than me how that works. So, but yeah, this is the hypervisor. We have some storage on that. So that one has 181 gigabytes of storage and it's totally empty. And that one, which is the local, has 66 or 60, well, 68-ish, 70, I'm not sure what they were going for there. One of these are for the ISO library. It could be that one because it says ISO library, <laughs> ISO images right there. Uh, so this is kind of a, 
a maintenance storage thing, uh, but where we can also put our ISO bar. And it, it's, it looks about right as it's the smallest one. And this one is for our disk image and containers. So that's for our virtual machines. Nice. Let's uh, go back up and see if we can see a summary there. Very nice. I have to be mindful of my picture down here in the bottom. So here we get some other information. We get that we have 16 CPUs. Of course, it's an 8 core CPU, but it apparently counts the hyperthreading. Then there's some load, uh, not doing much. We have 16 gigabytes of RAM that comes out to 14.85. Uh, that's uh, unfortunate. Uh, we have used 2.25% of the hard drive space, but it only shows that one drive there. Perhaps kind of weird. It tells us down here the CPU we have. Okay, that's uh, that's that one. That one. Cool. Uh, the kernel of the Linux that we are working on. Awesome. It gives us a CPU readout down here what we are doing. Then we have some server load. It was doing a little bit here. It dropped to zero when uh, probably when I was looking at those subscription thingies. And then when we get, went back in here, it, it went up. Memory usage, it's using, is it using all the RAM or, oh, that's the total and that's the RAM used. So as I don't have any virtual machines on it right now, it's not using much RAM. Very nice, it's very nice. So cool. What else do we have? We have all these buttons over here. Discs, it sees our physical disc out there. Cool. It does not see the other rate controller. It did not do anything with that. So all of these hypervisors look pretty similar. So there is not, there's not that much of a difference. We all, almost always have all the virtual machines out here. Uh, on, on Proxmox, we also have the hard drives. That could get very cluttered up. But the physical hard drives here can hide them. By, uh, we have a lot of hosts or they call it notes which is really stupid just don't change the words on something like that host is fine but with this hypervisor we have something special we kind of have where did it go the shell we actually get access to uh, to do some linux stuff because it is running on a linux kernel uh, that is also available in vmware esxi it's a little bit more difficult to get into. They didn't leave a button for it, but um, okay, there is some commands that can be done. But um, um, I think we have to do more stuff in the command prompt than we usually do in other hypervisors. Proxmox is good for both making virtual machines, but also for containers and. Virtual machines is a, a whole virtual machine. You kind of make a whole virtual machine with operating system, files and all of that. A container is like, it takes use of the already installed Linux kernel that is present. And then you can build on top of that. So instead of installing the operating system once again, it just builds on that. But it does it in a kind of a contained environment so that you don't you don't mess around with the original thing so it kind of make a, a sandbox for you and um, I don't know if I have anything that would be great to put in there but if that's the case we have it around that's nice so let's um let's wrap this up Proxmox is installed uh, compared to VMware the the screen here is pretty boring so uh, yeah Proxmox you might want to have this look cool. It happened, we have the first Proxmox installed on my uh, brand new server over here. And um, yeah, for those of you who follow my channel, I have figured out the, the warranty stuff with Lenovo. I was kind of in a special situation where I never got an invoice for this server because I kind of got it under the table-ish. 
and therefore upgrading the warranty was a problem. But in the end, Lenovo helped me out and made an exception. So I now have three years next business day on site warranty on this server. It also has Proxbox and, and I expect that we're gonna be playing a lot with that this coming year. And I'm gonna try and see if I can move all my stuff over to it. I'm not sure if it's possible to convert it or if I just have to reinstall it. Either way, it's probably gonna take, I don't have that many servers. If I had a thousand servers, I would definitely go for converting, but I think I have 10 or something. So it might be more like um, reinstalling. So thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye-bye.